Fred Mack, CEO of Found Spotlight and executive producer. We have great artists on the show today. Check them out. Welcome to the show. My guest today is recording artist Melissa Morgan with a hit song, Do Me Baby. And the list goes on. So please welcome my guest, my friend, Melissa Morgan, to Fam Spotlight. Hey, I want to welcome everybody back in that's watching. Is that my name right? Facebook Live. Yeah. We definitely got another amazing interview set up for y'all. I'm one of your hosts, Prince and Alice. And I'm Mel Rose. And we are here about to interview an amazing singer, talented person. Miss Melissa Morgan, how are you doing? Yes. <laughs> Hello, how are you? Good. We're all right, we're all right. A cute mirror you got there. That, that, everything you got over there is looking fly, yes. Well, this is my closet. So <laughs> he, can, he can give you a little tour. This is my, my closet. Oh, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, so we'll give you a little tour as, as we go on. Uh -huh. oh, oh, I see the shoes. Hold, hold up, hold up. Shoe, gas them up in here. Yes. Bags and Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Thank you. How are you, by the yes, way? I'm good. I'm good. We're here in South Carolina. Uh, We've uh, uh, kind of weathered the pandemic here, and uh, we're feeling good because um, we're Aiken, South Carolina, and there were only like a um, hundred cases of uh, coronavirus here, COVID, and yeah, in 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 so. I feel to be here, and, and I'm just commending them for doing such a wonderful job of uh, keeping this thing contained here. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's definitely a good thing to know. So how are you dealing with it as far as, like, being in the house and, you know, so how are you managing, you know, your day-to-day -day by just being in the house with this virus and this situation that's going on? manage it pretty well because I like staying in the house. <laughs> um, I'm really, I'm, I'm a whole body and uh, my house is really, uh, I didn't know it then, but it's, it's designed to be okay to be in the house because uh, we have a big backyard. We have, I have a, a porch in the front. I have a patio on the side, a screened in patio. Um, my uh, laundry room is out there. The kitchen is 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 uh, great. Um, this is my grandma's house, and I renovated it, so everything is like almost like brand new. So, so we're doing pretty good here. We're we're enjoying it. We take our supermarket runs, oh. and uh, we have, I wear mask and gloves, and and uh, then we come back home, and, and I'm good. And I crochet and cook and all that good stuff. So. I'm really weathering it well. The only thing I miss singing. I do miss singing, and I miss the crowd and all that stuff. But uh, uh, we'll get back to that when it's safe. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, like, who are some of the R&B singers you're listening to right now? Or your your top few? Let's say your top. Oh, who am I? Yeah, give me like your top three. I what? what? Top three that I like listening to. Oh, hmm. Oh my goodness, I like her. Her is nice, isn't she? She's uh, great. Uh, I like uh, Lettucey. Yeah, and uh, right. Well, wait, we lost you real quick. Uh oh. Oh, she's coming back. No, we we back. She gotta turn it. Turn the turn phone. Mm -hmm. Let me see them though. Got it. She can see. Oh, oh. Turn, oh. turn the phone sideways. Yeah, turn it sideways. Yeah. Wait. We don't get it together. 
<laughs> Sorry for the technical difficulties, people. If you're listening in, we're yeah. having the interview with Melissa Morgan, Melly Morgan. This way. Mel- Mel- like that, always like that. It's always like that. Turn, turn, turn phone like this. Lisa. <laughs> hey, you ain't getting vision. I can't. We can't hear her either. No, we can't. We gotta. Yeah, get up there, rolling. There we go. The sound, perfect. So now we just gotta have it flipped horizontally. I have it, I have, I have it sideways. Turn this it is straight up. Then turn it this okay. way. No, no. There. there you go. Right, almost right there. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Upside down. All right, we're sound. back. Yeah. So I was asking you. I was asking you. Uh, your your top three singers you're listening to at this moment. Well, not um, at this moment, but on your playlist. <laughs> okay, um, I like her. Um, I like Lettucey and uh, R and B. I'm trying to see. We, we was just listening to some some old school stuff. Uh, once we listened to Jodeci, yeah, we was listening to some Jodeci earlier well, we today. We like the girl that sings with black. Yeah, yeah. Huh? yeah. But you know what? We we've been listening to some Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> Really, I, I'm telling you, I, I've been listening to a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> wow, wow! <laughs> I just want to take you back, Fleetwood Mac. Uh, what were some of the songs being played? Yeah, tell me the Huh? What were some of the songs that was being played in your house when you were coming up when you were younger? In my youth. Yes. Oh my God! In my youth, we listened to uh, when the early youth, Aretha Franklin, uh, Jay's Round, uh, uh, the Supremes, all that. In my early, early youth, because uh, that's what the, you know, that's what my mother and them listened to. And uh, later on, Earth, Wind, and Fire, Shaka Khan and Rufus, uh, oh, all those, all those great groups, the Emotions, and. Um, then in in you know uh, by the time I hit uh, nineteen twenty I was uh, uh, in a background with like a sheep and we were opening for Gladys Knight and I uh, went on the tour with Shaka Khan I went out on the road with her and studio stuff with Jocelyn Brown and uh, oh just a whole bunch of people. So uh, all those people were very influential. Yeah. Oh wow, wow. So, what what's your process when you're in the studio? When you was going into the studio, or even now? I mean, now that you're you know you're more we're in quarantine, you're at home. I'm sure you're probably writing some songs. Is this your favorite place to write your songs, or no? <laughs> No, I'm 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 not even going in front of that. I'm I'm not really inspired to 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 write right now. You know, um, uh, when I get in the studio, when I hear music, then I get inspired, and probably something of of what I've gone through now, you know, will 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 trigger me, and uh, and and I'll be able to write about it. But um, right now, I'm just really. Uh, absorbing everything that's happening and and kind of in disbelief that this is happening during 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 my generation while <laughs> while we're alive. I, I never thought anything like this would happen, you know, uh in my lifetime. So I, I'm really kind of absorbing it and, and it'll be like right here and mm-hmm. and when I go into the studio, um some of it'll come out lyrically. But right now, it, I, I'm not really inspired to just, well, let me sit down and write. Because I, I don't want to write when, when, it's, when it's all bad, you know? Mm-hmm. It, right when it's all, all bad is, is going to give you all bad and, and dark stuff. And, and uh, I'm really not that kind of singer. I sing about love. I, I sing about hurt and stuff like that. But I don't sing about all bad stuff. And I think that if I, I wrote now, that, that's what the energy would be. Even though I'm, I'm happy and I feel good, the state of the world is just, you know, yeah. it's a little sad right now. I, I, I don't want to just write about that. I, I wanted to be a part of some of my writing, but I want to get back to the, to the good times. Right, right. That's true. Definitely, definitely. Now, 
what was some of the things that you did as far as like musically early on? What was some of the like like things that started your career? What would you say is some things that really jump started your career as far as musically singing? I, I I didn't get the question. <laughs> I guess what were some of the what are some of the what were some of the things early on in career that jump started you that made you want to take music very seriously as a full time career? What were some of the things that what, did you hear, Bay? I didn't hear that much. It keeps breaking up. My goodness, should we move? I'm wondering if we should move. Is it is it us or is it them? Should should we move? It's yeah, yeah, it might be yeah, yeah, to a spot. Is it maybe the connection? Let's, 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 let's move and see if it, let me just see if it, hey guys, we're in, in, in my living room area, so, uh, and this is my kitchen, we is it the Yeah, I don't know. It, hi. Hi. Can I, can I <laughs> better? Yeah. Ask the question. Okay. What were some of the things that made you take music as a career seriously? Oh, I don't know. I, I started out in a choir, uh, in a gospel choir, and um, I kind of, uh, hmm, I always knew I wanted to be a singer, so uh, I think it hit me when I was little. It hit me when I was little, so uh, by the time I hit about, about 15 or 16, everybody in, in my family and everybody you know, my friends and everything, everybody knew that I, I was going to be a singer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I just want to make sure I got everything. Yeah. So, you recently, they, they, I've, I've seen that you've gone to a bit of a hiatus, but you came back and you put a, a, another album working with Roberta Flack and, and Donna Hathaway. How was, how was, how was working with them? No, 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 no. I, I didn't work with them. What happened is that um, when I came back, um, mm -hmm. I was with a, a company called Hush Productions. Okay. And they're the ones that's responsible for the Do Me Baby and um, uh, Love Changes and uh, uh, with some of Fool's Trad Ice and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, they were influential. That, that I left them and I went to Capital and signed mm -hmm. directly with Capital. And then after that, I went back to Hush because they started a, a new company called mm -hmm. um, Orpheus. And um, when we when, when we went back, I wanted to do Back Together Again because I wanted to work with Freddie Jackson. And uh, so me and Freddie Jackson went in and did Back Together Again and it was produced by someone else. I know Roberta Flack. And uh, she was a sweetheart. Never met Donnie Hathaway, but um, uh, me and Freddie went in with another producer and did back together again, and it turned out really good. It was a, a top ten uh, R and B song. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that's what it is. Great, amazing things to do. Like, so, what are some of your processes of creating in the studio? Are you more of a just a one on one type of person, you and the producers, or is it is a team that's with you when you're in the studio and you're creating what you're creating? Um well it's always a team because I, I don't uh, uh do the music. Usually the music is is sent to me. So it's always a, a team effort. Uh I usually get the music first and uh then I start writing. So like my last uh, CD, um, uh, Love Demands, that was with uh, uh, Brady Ghazi. And uh, he would send the music to me. I would listen to it and then I would write. So it usually is a, a, a combined, a collaboration effort. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so, oh, sorry. <laughs> so, um, in, in your career, what would, what would you have ch uh, chosen if you wasn't a singer? Oh. Oh wow. I think <laughs> I think I would have been a secretary. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I would have been a secretary. Yeah. No, 
My fiance says no, and be a secretary. Well, <laughs> a lawyer. Why, 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 why would you say that? He said he's a lawyer. <laughs> a lawyer, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, because I will read those a contracts. Prosecutor. And, and, a prosecutor. You know what? I say, I don't know about other artists, but I say all my papers, I say everything. I think I have like the first contract, the first everything. I, I have stuff from when I was in. Um, um, school high school junior high school probably elementary too i save everything so um being a lawyer probably would have been good for me because that that's what it's about it's getting about the paperwork <laughs> that's funny <laughs> hey different things with different people you know you know sometimes it might be a, a great you know, thing for somebody now what yeah. I do is what are like four things that you would need? Like, let's say if you was getting ready to perform a show and they had your green room set up. What are four things that you would make sure you had in your green room before you got on stage to perform? Oh, that, that's a good question. Um, okay, what's in my writer? Uh, <laughs> fruit. I like, I like, I like cut up fruit, strawberries, um, blueberries, kiwi, oranges, pineapples, all that. Stuff. I, I like that. Uh, um, um, a fruit fruit tray, um, hot tea, uh, and and uh, honey and lemon, because uh, I like to, to have my honey and lemon and, and herbal tea, sometimes chamomile or, or blueberry or peach or something like that. Uh, what else? Uh, towels. Towels. Yep. Yeah, Got to have towels and uh, water and juice. Yes. And afterwards, uh, shrimp. Yeah, and then afterwards, because um, I don't eat before, but then, and, and I don't eat uh, chicken, I don't eat fried chicken and nothing like that, so I always order like a, a, a shrimp and pasta meal. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So I know, unfortunately, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming since the, the whole COVID, there was like a, a Voices of Soul R&B you were going to do at the Foxwoods, I believe, that was that. Was that something you were working on, or I'm not something I I, I researched? Maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna do the Fox was with uh, Stephanie Mills and yeah. and the Whispers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. What, what, what were the the? I mean, I'm, unfortunately, we can't get the whole concert anymore. But and you know, do you have any uh, songs that you could kind of tell us you were gonna play, or maybe any surprises that were gonna happen, or? how you were gonna perform, maybe give us a kind of a visual. Oh my goodness. Well, the first thing that I was thinking about for that show, and me and Stephanie Mills of Prince, was what to wear. <laughs> okay, well, what are you gonna wear? That's good. I'm sorry. I was thinking about what to wear, girl. I was like, okay, am I gonna come out in a gown, or am yeah. I gonna come out in, a, in rhinestones, or what? How's the hair gonna look? Uh, I was thinking about what to wear because you know Stephanie comes out, she says, and she ain't but about four foot something. So you know we have to be cute. And she always comes out with the cutest shoes. So I was thinking about what to wear, and mm -hmm. um, then after that, I just I toured with the Whispers before. Um, I had the pleasure of touring with them all through my career. But recently, about a year and a half ago, I toured, about two years ago, I toured with Patti LaBelle and, um, and the Whispers because uh, we went over to Europe. And mm -hmm. we did five, yeah, we've been about five days in, in the UK. And we did Wembley, uh, we did Manchester, we did Amsterdam, and it was just simply spectacular. So um, I've, I've worked with the Whispers before, so I always look forward to working with the twins. Um, but uh, I was just going to concentrate on really rocking the house. And, oh, I'm so uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, being in Connecticut, I was just really going to hit them with basically the hits. That would be, you know, Love Changes, um, Fool's Rat Ice. Do You Still Love Me, mm -hmm. Do Me Baby. Uh, it's some stuff from my, my new CD, um, Love Demands. I probably would have did How Can You Mend a Broken Heart or something like that because, it, it you know, that was a real, real soul R&B yeah. show. So I, I could do things like that. Maybe um, um, 
uh, Never Love a Man the Way That I Love You, which is on my new CD, Love Demands. I would have done something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. And, and as far as that new CD, um, who are some of the people that you worked with on that CD and some of the songs that you really knew that was like the single you really wanted to push? Well, we we started, I work with my fiance who was a rapper. I work with Sebastian, Sebastian Thomas. So that was really nice working with him. But basically that was uh, Brady Gazi and me and uh, Cleopatra Records. And um, it was really a lot of fun. I, the thing that I liked about A Love Demands is that there was six cover songs and six new songs. So I got to pick uh, wonderful songs like Love Is Here and Now You're Gone by The Supremes, How Can You Mend a Broken Heart, um, Al Green, uh, like I said, Never Love the Man, The Way I Love You, the Aretha Franklin. We even did the Tom Jones, It's Not Unusual. Uh, um, who was it? Otis Redding. Um, we did that one. Oh, we just did just so many wonderful things on, on that CD. I'm going to pull it out for you so you can see it and people can order it. But uh, yeah, that was, it was a great experience because I was able to um, have a little freedom creatively. And, and, and I was um, one of the producers. So it, it was really a lot of fun. How was working with, because I'm an all-time Prince fan, how was working with Prince? See, that's what people think that I work with Prince, but I didn't work with Prince. No, no. Um, um, the president of Capitol Records had that that song on hold for like two years before he, I even got with Capitol, and and he was running out of time holding the song. And he said, "The next R&B female that I sign, she's got to do this song." And I was the next one. I was like eighteen or nineteen when I did that song. It, it, you know, I, I don't want to do a Doobie Baby song. <laughs> right, 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 right. You know? But uh, I loved Prince, and um, uh, everyone thought, you know, it was it was a, a good fit with my voice. And Paul Lawrence actually produced that for me in the studio, and uh, it turned out to be one of my biggest hits. But I did meet Prince. Um, yeah. yeah, and uh, we were going to work on um, another song for the second the second uh, um, album that I did, and it was called Please Come Home, but our schedules just just didn't mesh, so he wound up doing that song with Mavis Staples. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. Now I'm going to listen to it differently and see how you would... <laughs> It'd be cool yeah. if you could remix it, yeah. like get on it too. Oh, wow. Yeah, but I, I, I work with some wonderful people uh, on remixes, Jay-Z. You don't like the lighting, babe? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, 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 he's looking for something. I'm like, should I move? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but um, I've worked with Jay-Z because, you know, my songwriting has, has helped me a lot through my years. So um, I did a remix with Jay-Z uh, for Can't Knock the Hustle. LL Cool J has sampled my stuff on Stand By Your Man, mm -hmm. The Fool's Paradise. Um, Mary J. Blige has uh, uh, used some of my stuff. So I'm co-writer on her song, A uh, Good Woman Down. Uh, um, who else? Uh, oh, I got my Diamond Platinum Award for singing background on Whitney Houston's first uh, uh, CD, Whitney, to the album CD. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I I've worked with a lot of good people. Uh, yeah, you have. Wow, like a legend in the make. I mean, not a legend in the making, a legend in the game. I mean, like, wow. Yeah, and you know what? I, I've, I've been wanting to tell people that my um, um, oral history is now a permanent um, um, fixture in the Library of Congress through, um, oh, who is it? The History Makers, yes. So um, I'm in the Library of Congress um, as an R&B singer. Officially, Melissa Morgan, the R&B singer, and, and my oral uh, biography is in the Library of Congress in Washington. Wow. Isn't that nice? Right? Oh, so. Thank you, History Makers. Right? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Definitely shout out to them. Yeah, like I said, we are definitely hanging out with Melissa Morgan. We are live on Facebook, and we are live on Instagram. We're just having a great time just hanging out. And I know some, a lot of fans are watching and artists 
they some people would love to know like what are some of the sacrifices that you feel like you had to make like on that process and that journey of, of your career uh, um having a family probably yeah that was never something that that really was at the top of my list the the career was was more important so you know i don't have any kids but but i'm a great auntie <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, um, I have my fiance Sebastian. So um, now I have love. And, now you have kids. Uh, now, now I have kids. But I treat them like a kid. <laughs> <laughs> now you got a kid. Exactly. Yes. Um, exactly. To do, so, yeah. <laughs> so that and and. Um, in, in in my uh, grown up years, I haven't had a pet. I do I do want a pet, but traveling and stuff it makes it hard. But uh, I do want a pet. So things like that, you know, spending more time with the family. What kind of pet? Life. You said you said a pet, dog, cat, any kind you actually looked into. You well, saw I want you? a cat. I want a cat and and a small dog. But a small dog. <laughs> and a small. Dog. A small, tiny something. <laughs> oh man, that's gonna be that's gonna be some. You're gonna have a lot of entertainment around the house. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> well, we were. Um, I I have a place in, in New York, a co-op, and we was I wasn't able to have a um, pet there. But here in South Carolina, like I said, this is my grandma's house, and I renovated. But I just <laughs> walked away, and we're gonna build uh, um, a new house, big, big, like three thousand. Oh. Square foot house, and when I build that, then I'm going to get my pet because then we'll officially be, you know, down here and not back and forth so much. Right, right. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so um, while you're in this whole quarantine, what is something like? What is one of your favorite dishes you like to whip up real quick in the kitchen? Well, since you mentioned that, <laughs> <laughs> I, it so I, happens. <laughs> It's like one third um, um, cup of sugar. You know, mm. I do two thirds. And then put it in the oven, right? So you can get your brown around that, that meringue. And look what you get. Ooh, wee. Uh -oh. oh, that looks great. Does that look that great? Look at that looks that. great. Yeah, so that's Melissa's little meringue pie. <laughs> Oh, so are you thinking of going into uh into the pie business like Patty? 
She does banana pudding. Yes, yeah, she yes. does single service of, but well, she has the big one, but she also does single service of banana pudding. Oh, I gotta and get that. When I tell you that thing is good, oh my goodness, it is so good. So, oh, so nice. yeah, but this is the lemon meringue pie, um, and it's got the graham cracker crust, and and uh, I'm just letting it just get as as cold as possible, so I can have me a piece later. <laughs> that is gonna be so good. Oh my gosh, it looks great. Yeah, but, and you it's, made, so it's, so, it's so simple. So, yeah. It's so simple. Just remember, just all the directions are on, on the side of the jello box. You know, and graham cracker crust, and that's it. You know, and you have yourself looking for rank high, and everybody will think it came from the store. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> yes. It's on the new show. Yeah. Yeah. With Melissa Morgan now. Let's I know go. it ain't go. <laughs> exactly. We need we to start a new show almost. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so, so that's why. So, tell me about you guys. Are you guys uh, in Chicago? I'm in New York. I'm in Chicago. You're in New York. How are you doing in New York? Uh it's it's quiet. <laughs> It's not, you know, everyone's set up. So I'm, I'm luckily I'm next to a park, even though I'm not supposed to go to the park, but I, I walk around the sides and stuff, get a little fresh air. Well, that's the oxygen. That's the stuff that's going to keep you healthy. That's yeah. that's why we're doing really good here because all the trees and, and the fresh air, and, and you know what I'm saying? And, and we go walking too. We go walking around the neighborhood and we also go walking around the walk trail. Um, but that's the stuff that you need to keep you healthy. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And you appreciate nature yeah. while you're, you know, while this is happening. I, I start to, I'm starting to more, have more appreciation for nature. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Fred, you're in Chicago. Yeah, I'm in Chicago. And let's just say we are doing the best we can to stay quarantined and stay safe. But it's a few people out there that just realize they just want to go out and have fun and they just ain't going to be quarantined by this weather. So I heard about, is that, <laughs> Is that the news that had the Chicago party with the thousand people? Yes, yes, <laughs> that is Chicago. It is you your Chicago. Now, now yeah. listen, you, I, I, I just want to say, our people, our people, wake up because this is serious. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Right. And, and, and when you in, yeah. in in New York, we just saw on the news about them in the Bronx. Uh, just having bodies in trucks because there's nowhere to put them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in Brooklyn or, or the Bronx. And, and that is, it's just tragic. And all you have to do is wear a mask and, and, and just be cool and some gloves and be cool for a minute. Take some vitamins and, and yeah. chill. Yeah. yeah. Right, right, definitely, definitely, yeah. Yeah. definitely. I, 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 I can't stress enough the safety. We, we, have, to, we have to do our part to do yes. our part. You know what I'm saying? And yes. um, I, I'm starting to see as they as they opening up. I'm starting to see people not wearing their masks, not wearing yeah. their gloves as much, you know. And uh, I think we have to continue that for a while. Yeah, we're still wearing our mask. It's like I mean, we don't have anything open yet, but it's still like everywhere you go. If you're going to the grocery store anywhere, the mask is on. They don't even allow you inside without it. So you, yeah, you have to come in like it. Definitely can't go nowhere, public places, anything without a mask on. So, I mean, it's a lot of people that still taking precautions, like essential workers, they still taking their precautions while they're going to work, while other people are not. So, I mean, hopefully we get through this whole pandemic thing and this whole situation. And um, due to the fact that all that, I was, as far as like marketing, like music and stuff like that, how's that, um, how, does, how does that process, or you went about doing that process as far as marketing your music? You know, um we have i i have had to take a lot of that into my own hands in in, in the last uh, few years because the record companies are not like they used to be you know before uh they would do the marketing it, it was like um uh motown 
you, you know how Motown was where, mm -hmm. you know, it was a machine. You come mm -hmm. in, they, they give you the hit, they, they give you the look, they, they show you how to dance, they, they, you know, they give you the poise, they show you how to carry yourself, interview, and they market, they promote, they, they, they uh, 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 do things for you to, um, do, I'm going to sit down, do things, he likes the lighting over here better. <laughs> I do too. He's right. <laughs> yeah, no, that's okay. They they do things for you to um um uh be on TV and and remember there was Soul Train, there was yep. Clark, there was all those things that we don't we don't have that as much now, you know. So you really have to market yourself and and and, and uh, really find ways to uh, uh, keep yourself out there. Uh, I've been fortunate. I've been on uh, recently like 13 magazines with, since my uh, Love the Man uh, has come out. And that was through me doing publicity and, and, and my girl Desiree and some other people and really getting out there and getting on the internet and, and, and finding ways to, to promote yourself and your music. Touring, we recently, last year, I toured in Japan. I did Osaka and Tokyo, and it was wonderful. I hadn't done that in 19 years. Um, I don't know why, but it, it, you know, I don't know why. But anyway, I did it, and it was very good. So you have to constantly keep yourself out in the social media, internet uh, marketing game because it's it's different than what it was before. Right. Right. Wow. Wow, that's uh, that's yeah. Because I mean, now it's it's a lot of now it's a little easier. I know they got like the social media. Everything is it's a lot easier for marketing. So this is a little bit uh, different, but just kind of off the cuff again. So I know we're in this whole quarantine state. Is there a, a favorite movie or a series you've been binge watching on Netflix or Hulu or just in general? <laughs> yes, I I, I watched a uh, Nas. I like documentaries. I watched Nas. That was really good because I'm from Queens. Okay. And, and I know about Queens Bridge and all that. So that was really uh, cool watching that. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what else did we recently watch? I watched uh, the, the documentary on Elizabeth Holmes and um, uh, the, the company that she was running uh, for the, uh, the blood with the little, little piece. That mm -hmm. you're supposed to be able to stick in your hand and not have to take a needle. Right, right, right. What was, the, what was her company? Technos? Trechnos? Yeah. But anyway, it was Elizabeth Holmes. I watched that. Mm -hmm. um, have you been, we've been watching. We've been we watched watching, everything. We've been uh, watching <laughs> the Kung Fu. The, the, the Kung Fu. We got um, into Green Leaf. We Asian. got into Dynasty. Green we've been Leaf, watching we everything. That. Yeah, uh huh. So, oh, like Dynasty, that. that's my show. I love me some Dynasty. On Netflix? <laughs> Which, yeah. Which one? Dynasty. I didn't even know it was a remake. When I told yeah. my mom, she was like, yeah, this has been, this is, oh, they did, oh, they remade it. And I got her on it now. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was really good. I watched, um, we, uh, I just watched the thing on um, addiction. I watched the thing on the con artists, the imposters. <laughs> oh. I, I watched all that stuff. And, and, uh, did, what, what movie did we just see that I liked? Uh, night Before Day or Day Before? The one oh, we just seen today. All Day and Night. All Day and Night. I all like that. Day and night. That was good. That was good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a, that's, it's a lot. There's a lot of great shows. Definitely yeah. a lot of great shows out there. And speaking of shows, what was And you know what? I did, I did City Winery. I did City Winery recently. Really? Okay. Yes. Um, when do we do that? January twentieth. In Chicago. In Chicago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and 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 hung out with Mickey. Hey, Mickey. Mickey <laughs> Howard. Yeah. That's my girl. And, Wait. I don't know. If, I don't know about City Winery. Is it like a like a like a festival, like a, a wine festival or something? No, no, no. City Winery is is a club. They they have one in uh, Washington D.C., New York. Chicago, Boston, Nashville, Atlanta, oh. and, and a whole bunch of artists have performed there. Uh, Cece Pittison performs there. Uh, Eric Benet performs there. Melba Moore performs there. I perform there. 
Vicki Howard has a residence. She, she just goes, just hops from place to place. <laughs> and um, it, it's really a, a, a really nice, nice uh, place. Holds probably about 100, 150 people okay. where, where they can come and see you in an intimate setting. And uh, some people, because it's it's a it's actually a winery, they'll offer for you to you know put your name on on the type of wine that you like. But I don't drink, so okay. I don't I don't participate in that program. A lot of the artists, Tony Terry and all of them, they put their name on on the type of wine that they like, and they sell it for that night after the concert or during the concert. Yeah, oh, that's cool. Okay. Yeah, Fred knows it. Have you been to City Winery? Oh yeah, I've been a, a couple of times, seen a couple of artists, and it's a real, like I said, intimate setting where you get more closer to the artist, you get a more like closed-in setting, and they do more like not just the hits, they do stuff that where they can test out and see how the crowd participates with it, how the crowd likes it. So those wineries are real good. Like I would say, first day breakers, something that you would take a first day of, stuff like that. That's just my opinion. And speaking of like events. What are some of the events that you like to do, whether it's like the winery situations or like festivals, like that's a festival. What are some of the events that you just love to perform at? I, I like I like performing in, in, in um, Tokyo again. I like the city wines because I like it's a little bit more intimate. I like the um, I like the amphitheaters. Uh, and um, I like like Westbury. Uh, the theaters in around, I like those. Uh, outdoors is always so hard sometimes, but but I like but I like the more intimate settings. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds that sounds nice. Yeah, nice yeah. Nice. We just I just recently did St. James Live in in Atlanta. You know, the, very intimate. I think she holds like a hundred people. So um, I'll do that like like once a year or once every year and a half. Pretty cool. Hmm. So uh, in your career, what, what was one of your favorite artists that you collabed with or producers you, you liked working with? Which one was like your favorite or favorite moment? Or maybe a story you could tell us about. Kashif. Yeah. I, really, I really enjoyed working with Kashif. He was, he was such a consummate producer and musician. And um, he cared. He cared about, he didn't only care about how he sounded in, 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 in the music. He cared about how it enveloped your talent. And that's why he was so good with, with producing like Evelyn Champagne King, uh, the, the Whitney Houston songs that, that I was I had the pleasure of singing on because of him on her first uh, album CD and, and Love Changes. He really cared about making the music and your 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 instrument, you know, go hand in hand. Um, I love working with Najee. Um, uh, he's a, a good friend. I, I like touring with him, and he's the one who plays saxophone on um, "Do You Still Love Me." Um, I I enjoy working with Lisette Wilson, who mm -hmm. was the producer of, of most of my first album and, and, and second album. Um, and she's responsible for being a co-writer for Funkin' for Jamaica. I just like people that, that really love what they do, but they know how to take your, your talent and your instrument and, and, and make things come together. Um, I, don't, I don't like people that are like, this, this is my sound and, and this is what I am, you just fit in. You right. know what I'm saying? And, and, right. You know, and that, that becomes like a clash and I've worked with some producers and some music didn't make it because that's how they were. They were like, well, we're who we are, and, you know, and this is what we say works. So, so you make what you do fit into to us. Uh, and sometimes, yeah, you can, sometimes you can't. Sometimes you, you, you need to fine tune it and, and do some adjustments because uh, um, every production doesn't work with, with every vocal and every talent. Right. Okay. Definitely good, 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 good observation on that. And yeah. for everybody that's tuning in right now, Facebook Live, we are hanging out with the amazing Michelle Morgan, um, an amazing person. Michelle, Melissa. Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Melissa with one S. Let me, uh, should I get the, if you stay here, I'll get the, the CD so that they can. Yeah. 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 
I love this. It's so awesome. <laughs> We get, we get, we get, we get a key lime pie. We got twelve for shoes. We we get that. What what else? Melissa Morgan got for us. Hold I was up. recently on on Broadway magazine. Yeah, and this was my Grammy look. We go to the Grammys every year because I'm a Grammy member, and we went to the Grammys this year and just just had so much fun. So this is one of the uh, the. Uh, Magazine covers. Mm -hmm. Then I told you, um, look at that. Look what they did. Oh, wow. That's nice. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we saw, look at all the, the wonderful people we saw at the Grammys. Ah, let's see. Who do we see? I got a whole, they did a real, this is, I just love this. That magazine. is awesome. They did. Thank you, Bronze. I'll be sure. The baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Flavor Flav. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Uh, uh, Terry Lewis from Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. Yeah. Oh. And, and, and we had that, that unfortunate, may he rest in peace day, when it was the same yeah. day that Kobe Bryant passed away. Yeah. Which was really sad. Yeah. So rest in peace, Kobe, and prayers to your family. So I have, this is my new CD, mm -hmm. uh, Love Demands. Mm -hmm. And um, have all the wonderful songs on it that I talked about. Um, How can you mend a broken heart? Never love the man the way I love you. Those are the uh, covers. Love is here and now you're gone. I've been loving you too long. Yeah, I did. Oh, I like singing that. Like, I've been loving you oh, okay. too long. Yeah. I can't stop now. Okay. No. Yeah. Please so give us the concert. That, um, right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> um, and nothing, nothing can change. When I do that song live, mm -hmm. that that's a good one too. I don't know if you know that. Um, um, if I go a million miles away, you know that one. Yeah. <laughs> that's not how, yeah. That's how you want to get to that. But anyway, so um, we did that. And then we have the, the cover, I mean, the, the new songs, Love the Man's. And I did uh, the only one with my fiance, uh, Sebastian, mm -hmm. and uh, we wrapped on it. So, and you can get this at all, um, what's that? Uh, uh, Internet retail. Retail. <laughs> yeah, Internet retail, Spotify. I don't say iTunes, like <laughs> Target, all digital, all digital uh, uh, yep. outlets. You can get this, yeah. So uh, I'm very proud of this. And um, this was up for a possible Grammy nomination. We got up to the point of where they picked the the five, but we didn't make we didn't make the five. But we was we was close up in there. So okay. very happy about that. And. Uh, yeah, and this was uh, one that I did with Sears Maji. I did a song with him in, in, in the mood to take it slow on, on this CD. So this is another one. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, wow. So that was my self-promotion. <laughs> that, and you just took us, yo, from memory lane to, yo, I love it. I love it. And, and you can go um, on on um, on my Facebook, you know, um, stay right there. Oh, we got something. <laughs> we getting everything. That's what I'm talking about. I know. Oh, this is like my best interview so far. I love this. We got it. So for the new year, I was in um I was in Europe. Uh I was in the UK. I performed with Glenn Jones. So we did this, and then I made the cover of this magazine in the UK. And that's me and Glenn Jones. We did the luxury weekender. It was really, really nice. Luxury so weekend, and we had so much fun. And um, then they put me on the cover of, of this in in uh, Europe, and, and uh, that was really fun. Uh, the European um, fans are, are different. Yeah, I was about to say what uh, what the difference between the fans here in in America and like overseas Europe, and and I think in you know other countries you you uh, performed at. They are they are consummate uh, fans. They 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 study. They stay loyal to the end. 
They stay loyal to the end. They are constant, constant, constant fans. They, uh, uh, they will research. They will find out where you come from. Really? Uh, uh, what you're like. Who they, they really, uh, they love R&B and soul music over there. I was able to go to um, Europe last year three times, which was wonderful. I did um, the O2 with Melba Moore. Mm -hmm. uh, Jean Kahn mm -hmm. and uh, Shirley Jones from the Jones Girls, okay. which was wonderful. And then I was able to go back over to Amsterdam and do another show and then come back at the beginning of the year and do this show. And now they want me to do like an eight city tour and go to Paris and all that stuff. Okay. And we were putting all that together for yes. like August, September, October when the pandemic hit. So, you know, everything shut down. But uh, They'll pick it back up, and, and yeah. uh, I have a, a, a eight to ten city tour coming with some other artists. So we're we're looking forward to getting back on the road and and and, and seeing our fans. I know I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So and if, and if you want to find out my my uh, social media stuff, it's uh, all here. All here. So. That's uh, Facebook, Melissa Morgan, with one L, one I, and one S. I don't have two of anything. That's right. Okay. Yeah, that's Melissa Morgan, too. And then Melissa Morgan fan page, one. Twitter, Melissa Morgan, 22. Instagram, Melissa Morgan, one. But all you have to do is put up Melissa Morgan. It'll come. M-E-L-I-S-A-M-O-R-G-A-N. And I'm there. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, so you got all that good stuff, yeah. <laughs> and it's Sunday, guys. Did it you pray? is. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes I forget the days. Getting it. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's important to pray. Important to pray. Yes, absolutely. Very, very important. What are some of the things that you wish you knew now that you would have known back when you first started your career? That's a good question, Fred. Um, I wish I would have known how to be more uh, uh, independent uh, with my marketing and, and, and promoting myself more than, than now. And, and we thought we were doing a good job because we were, you know, uh, singing background and, 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 you know, making our little, little money back then. But I wish I would have... Um, just been a little bit more hands-on with my career then, you know, because it took, you know, like like losing my record deal and stuff like that for me to say, oh, you know what, wait a minute, you know, if, 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 you know this manager ain't gonna do it, then I'm gonna have to do it for myself. So um, I wind up firing uh, my manager, everybody, because, you know, they were just coasting. They were just coasting, they, they wasn't really helping me in, and uh, just bogging down and making phone calls and, and, and doing it myself to, to get back on my feet. Wow. Yeah. So, so what inspires you? What is something that you can tell the people that are listening to keep going? And, you know, especially while we're in this pandemic and even, you know, if someone who wants to also pursue their music career, what is some um, advice you, you can give us? Um, keep your passion, keep your passion and happiness for, for what you do and your talent. Uh, um, if you're starting out, learn, 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 learn. I went to Juilliard School of Music. Um, I went to Lee Strasberg's acting, you know, to get over some of my shyness. Um, this is a, it's, it's easier for them because everyone thinks that they have their own television show on Facebook and Instagram anyway. <laughs> So, you know, uh, uh, with us, we, we, we had to learn how to, how to do that. But I would just say, you know, um, education, talk, you know, learn how to talk and, 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 and be correct, you know, with your grammar and stuff like that. Because there's a lot of people talking and I don't even understand what they're saying in, in, in this generation. And they need to, you know, talk so that it's more universal. And not just, you know, not just street cred, you know, because the, the little person uh, in Aruba, 
are, are in, in the mountains or something that loves soul music, you know, they want to understand what you're saying too. Get a good lawyer. Get a good lawyer. Learn how to read your contracts and save your money. Save your money and don't sell your publishing. Okay. Okay. Great advice. That is great advice. Yeah. And what, um, so what are some of the goals that you have for your music going forward? Um, I like to do a gospel album because that's where I come from. I come from gospel and uh, I'd really like to come full circle and do a gospel album and uh, uh, another, another uh, uh, real soul CD because uh, I've only had six, six CDs. I, I have people... When I talk to Najee and, and Will Down, they may have 20. And it's like, oh my God, I can't even, I can't even imagine that. But I, I think I have six good ones. And, and uh, I think before my time is up, I'd like to at least have 10. Okay. That, that's an amazing goal. That is an amazing goal to have. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to see what else I want to ask you because there's so much I want to ask. And I'm just like trying to figure out, like, more so because I, I i like i said you you have a lot of uh experience you've met so many people uh going to well i know you mentioned the grammy so i'm assuming that was like one of your memorable experiences but do you have any other memorable experiences where you were um you know yeah that went to an award show or you got an award or something where you were like wow i'm really making it like that aha moment Remember that aha moment? Uh, I, I've been nominated for stuff like the Soul Train Music Awards and, and, and attended those events and stuff. Those have been fun. But, but to me, I mean, ultimately winning a Grammy or at least being nominated would be, you know, the ultimate, ultimate. Um, uh, right now we are, believe it or not, I, I can tell you a story about uh, Doobie Baby. Uh, Doobie Baby, the album and CD when everything went over to South Scan and everything, was that like 485,000 uh, copies? And I've yet to get my gold record for uh, Do Me Baby. So we're going to be, uh, you know, fighting to get that from Capitol because uh, when it went to South Scan, all that stuff got lost. And um, I, I think I'm entitled uh, to that. Yeah. Uh, I'm, it's 500 thousand by now so um i would like to get that um there are things that, that in this industry you go through transitions or or you might be like r&b and hip-hop i think you know i always talk about r&b and hip-hop because when when hip-hop came out uh it became a whole new genre for that generation and r&b kind of like you know got kicked to the curb so we lost some some years with r&b you know sustaining and being right up there in the industry so now i think r&b is is, is just making a, a resurgence right yeah right. definitely would agree with that yeah yeah because at one point we wasn't hearing any r&b we was just hearing hip-hop 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 and R&B was kind of like, like in, in the back yeah. burner. So all the, all the, yeah, all the great Stevie Wonders and the records and this and that that were coming out, they were kind of, you know, getting the, okay, we're going to promote this first and we're going to MC Hammer and all that. And then we'll work on, you know, Melissa Morgan or, 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 or this one because they were selling more and, and they were, Economically, they were cheaper, cheaper to make. Yeah. 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 R&B had gotten out of hand. I mean, you could do an R&B album and let you spend like you know three hundred to five hundred thousand dollars, where you know hip hop was coming out saying, you know, here I got this for fifty thousand dollars, put it out, and it goes number one, and it makes like you know ten yeah. million. Yeah. So, so really quick, uh, when when. When you're writing your music, right? Was any of your songs, or I don't know, maybe all of your songs, are they all uh, experiences that you went through, you've gone through, or this is more like you just anyone that any one of them that hits you here, even when you perform to this day? 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mostly all, all, all of my songs because as a writer are, are from experience. So uh, that's what you pull from. But uh, "Do You Still Love Me" is still one of my favorite, favorite songs to sing. Um, uh, even when I sing uh, "How Can You Mend a Broken Heart," it reminds me of of my my childhood and 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 my cousin Sue loving Al Green. And you know, so we always pick from from things that that we remember subconsciously or consciously we, you know when, you, when you're writing you're really writing about something that you've gone through very rarely can you have a, a big hit and, and, and write about something that you know nothing about right right definitely definitely so how are your fans today when they hear your songs or they go to your concerts how do they receive you and how do they you know when when you get on stage how are they They know all the hits. Is that they don't want to see me do nothing new. They just want to see me continue to do the also because that that takes them back to you know. Oh God, I remember you know when when I was making babies and do me baby. I made you know my child off a do me baby and, and you know. But uh, I, I want them to to grow up and, and expand with me. You know, as I as I take this new journey, and sometimes that becomes hard for them. But, my fans receive me with much, much love. And I have dance fans because uh, Still in Love was, was a dance song and, and Keep in Touch Body to Body. Um, you know, I was lead singer on that. So they all, they all remember all of that stuff because that was their growing up. I have people from the military to tell me, you know, I helped them get through the military because they played my songs. So all that kind of stuff is really nice. That's good. I was just about to ask you, like, has, uh, is uh, what is something that a fan has ever said or done for you that made your your heart melt? Like, oh, that was so sweet of a fan, I, I, and motivated you to continue going. Or maybe uh, they, going? they 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 um, yeah they they um they tell me about their experiences, but they also some of them bring. I remember one time I was in, into earrings a lot. They would bring me, they'll, they'll bring, they'll bring, um, especially in Europe, which is wonderful. They will bring every single CD, single, everything that I did, they will buy it. They get it on the internet, buy it, get it, and they'll bring it for me to sign. So those, those things are wonderful. And they had a, uh, a couple of fans bring me paintings, you know, of myself, which is really nice. Uh, so those, those are, those are real nice memories. That is nice. Yeah. That is that is amazing. I'm pretty sure those are the moments that that you cherish as far as an, an artist. And we definitely appreciate you coming to Fan Spotlight. And Fred Mack definitely wants to say some things before we get out of here. <laughs> Oh, How you doing, Melissa Morgan? Hi. Oh, is that Fred? Oh, I'm Fred. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so, I, I can't see who's who. Princeton. Uh, Princeton? Princeton, yeah. Princeton and? Rose. Rose. Real Rose. Real Rose. How you doing? Real Rose. Oh, my God. I like that, Real Rose. Oh. Thank you. Well, hi. Hi, Fred Mac. How you doing? I'm doing good. It's an honor to have you on Found Spotlight as our guest today. Thank you. I appreciate you. it. Yeah. Appreciate you. Thank you. Much love Thank to you. you. Yes. Well, I, I had a good time. I, you know, you was in my closet. You came into the kitchen. You and <laughs> we had a good experience. <laughs> she just went all over the place. Now we got this pie, and I'm thinking, should I have pie before I have them? <laughs> <laughs> My fiance is like, no, let's eat first. <laughs> right. Well, well, thank you again. We appreciate you. Much love. Much love. Oh, yeah. thank you guys. God bless you. Be safe, okay? Thank and, you. Uh, you know, I look forward to seeing you in person real soon when all this is over. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Happy Sunday. Happy Saturday. Sunday, yeah. <laughs>